Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're gonna to talk about eight secret healing practices that your doctor probably doesn't even know to tell you to do, and the top 1% of the world is using. Those billionaires and people who are in a whole nother tax bracket, they know about this kind of stuff, and they're using it on a daily basis. So I'm gonna share these eight healing practices with you, and you need to incorporate them into your lifestyle. Remember, knowledge is not power, it's the application of knowledge that is power, okay? Hugely important, all right? So now when I say healing practices, what's important to know and understand is a practice. You gotta practice, okay? This is something that you have to implement not only one time, but this is something that you have to constantly implement for it to actually have the benefit. And I think that's where a lot of people fail. So I'm trying to make sure you understand how important that is. So we're gonna talk about eight healing practices that you can incorporate into your lifestyle to not only heal your body, but to keep your body from getting diseased. okay? Hugely important, all right? So without any further ado, number one, Number one is heal your microbiome. What is your microbiome? That is that good bacteria in your gut, the probiotics in your gut that make up the inner lining of your gut, especially in the small intestine. Now, the reason why I'm specifically saying that microbiome, which is like a garden, okay? So as you look out here on the farm, there's all kind of trees here. We got sour sop right there we got a banana tree right there we got sugar apple over there we got custard apple over there we got milk or berry we got you know black sapote you know we got sapodilla we got star star fruit star apple we got all types of different trees and plants and herbs here on the farm now why am i bringing that up because your microbiome is exactly like that all of these fruits, all of these herbs on this farm have a different function in terms of how it can heal you, how it can maintain your health. And inside of your gut, you have a microbiome and each of those different types of good bacteria, acromantia, I can go down the list. Each of these different bacteria has a different function. Some of them help you to break down the food. Some of them help you to better absorb the food. Some of them are good for your metabolism. Some of them are good for burning fat. A lot of them are good for building the immune system, okay? But collectively, they do all of these different things. The same way all of these things on the farm, which are not only nutritious, but also very medicinal for us, that is what your microbiome is, okay? And the reason why I'm saying you need to heal the microbiome because we live in a world today where virtually all the food is toxic. Everything we're putting on our skin is toxic. The air is toxic. The water we're bathing in, we're drinking in, a lot of times is toxic as well too. The, the radiation that's coming from the cell phone, coming from our computers, coming from our, you know, our wireless routers, that's coming from the television, that's coming from our laptops, that EMF is affecting our health as well too. Okay, which means that it's also affecting our microbiome. Okay, because everything that comes into the body, it feeds the body. Okay, it's going to affect our microbiome. And we have different types of microbiome. We got microbiome on the skin. We got micro, another microbiome inside of the nose. We got a microbiome inside of the mouth. A woman has a microbiome in her, her uh, womb. Okay, and all of these get affected by what we eat, what we put on our skin, what we put in our mouth, etc. But here's the really important note, note of notice that you need to have. Your microbiome, once it's damaged, it can be rejuvenated if it hasn't gone past a certain point, okay? As a matter of fact, specifically talking about the gut microbiome, we can rejuvenate that microbiome in every two weeks. And if you implement something that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, you can rejuvenate your entire microbiome. Those probiotics that are in your gut that garden that I just talked about inside of your body, on your skin, in your nasal cavity, in your mouth, okay? In your womb, okay? If you do this thing that I talk about a little bit later, you can regenerate it in three to five days. You can have an entirely new microbiome, okay? And, and of course, that comes with what you eat as well too because you gotta feed the probiotics as I've talked about before, prebiotics. But it's important to know if you want a new garden, that has all kind of weeds in it. You gotta weed out, you gotta get rid of the weeds that are 
essentially eating up, eating away at the garden that has stripped away the soil and made the soil so dense and compact that it can't properly nourish the plants that are actually in it. Okay? So it's hugely important to understand healing practice number one, you got to heal the microbiome. You got to heal this gut first. Hugely important. All right? Number two, deep sleep. I always tell people, don't sleep on sleep. A lot of people sleep on sleep. And what I mean by that is people don't know how important their sleep is. Okay? So whenever you're having sleep issues, it's not only an issue in terms of you're not getting your rest. It's an issue in terms of your health. Okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because our sleep is just, it's like a, a car. Okay? A car needs rest. Let's say if you had an electric car. Well, you got to rest the car. And when you rest it, you got to plug it in. All right? When we sleep, we plug in into our natural healing mechanisms. And if we don't get a certain kind of sleep, and what, what I mean by a certain kind of sleep, all sleep isn't created equal. What I mean by that is you got REM sleep, which most people think that REM sleep is the best type of sleep. But REM sleep is the type of sleep when you're actually dreaming. That isn't truly restful sleep. Okay? Deep sleep is what we're looking for. Non-REM. Okay? Deep sleep is when our bodies are fully rested. And when our bodies are fully rested, almost in a catatonic, paralyzed state, that is when the body heals and repairs and regenerates. Okay? So if you start to see that you're having sleep issues or signs of unhealthy sleep, where you're waking up in the middle of the night, okay? Where you're snoring throughout the night. So maybe your partner tells you about that. Okay, where well, you're having these long extended dreams throughout the night. Okay, because you're supposed to go into REM. That's the, the uh, typically when you're in REM, that's when you're coming out of sleep. But if you spend your whole night in REM, in REM, it means that you've been dreaming throughout the night. You haven't been in restful sleep. Okay, so if you start to notice that you're starting to have these signs that you're having issues with your sleep, you need to correct your sleep. You need to tap into this healing practice in terms of how do you correct your sleep getting rid of the blue light making sure the temperature in the room is correct okay also making sure you don't have any devices in the room like i don't have a tv in my room i definitely don't put the wireless router in my room okay before i go to sleep i'm not watch watching any type of you know action movies and thrillers and things like that so it makes it difficult to go to sleep okay so tap into the deep sleep that is hugely important because when we go into deep sleep it increases growth hormone. Growth hormone is instrumental in creating healthy muscle, growing muscle, and strong bones. Okay? So hugely important. Make sure you get your deep sleep. That kind of sleep, when you wake up, you're like, oh, yeah, let's get the day started. Okay? So you got to get your deep sleep. And not only that, it helps with strong bones and making sure you got energy it's also anti-inflammatory, but it's also good for your memory when you sleep properly. So if you're struggling with your memory, it could be because you're not getting restful sleep. If you're struggling with your, your immunity in terms of always feeling like you got an infection, it could be because you're not getting restful sleep. If you're struggling even with your weight, okay? All right, you have weight problem struggles. A lot of times it is your sleep because it increases cortisol. And guess what cortisol does? It causes the body to store fat whenever you don't get restful sleep. So number two is deep sleep, okay? Number three, thermotherapy. What I mean by that is cold and heat therapy, okay? Both of them are highly beneficial. And these are things that, again, the 1% of the world are very aware about. They're very aware about cold showers and cold plunges. They're very aware about the sauna and sunbathing. An infrared sauna they're very aware of this there's so many people that today they not only have a sauna in the house they also have a cold plunge you know uh, the, the tub in the house as well too so they're using both therapies and why is it so important all right why is it so beneficial for these type of therapies it increases recovery Okay, it's also anti-aging. It's also detoxifying to the body, especially when you're used in a sauna and you feel all that sweat coming out, you're releasing toxins from the body. I've said in other previous videos, when you sweat, you're removing heavy metals from the body. Not alone the mucus and the acidity from the body as well too, 
So it's hugely important we start to incorporate this into our, you know, our daily routine, if not ru uh, weekly routine, okay? Even with the cold plunge, and I know people hate cold showers, but again, it does all of the, uh, many of the same benefits as the sauna, but it also really helps with things like, you know, recovery. It also decreases inflammation in the body as well too. And it's also really good for depression and also our immune system. And it's also good for memory as well too and increasing brown fat in the body. Brown fat is this type of fat that is actually the good fat in our body that actually, have, actually increases our metabolism to burn the fat that we don't need. Okay, so cold therapy is good for that, all right? So get your thermal therapy on, all right? Number four, stress management. People think being stressed is a normal thing. Now, what I will say, oh, they got the goats in the background. Bah! So what I will say about this, life in and of itself will have its stresses, but how we manage that is very important. And it's important to know that stress not only isn't a mental stress, Stress causes damage physically, emotionally, mentally, and it leads to dis-ease and inflammation in the body as well too, okay? So it's so important to understand that when you get stress, stress, the solution for stress isn't antidepressants or anti, you know, uh, anxiety pills, okay? Let's say you're stressed about work. It doesn't matter how much antidepressants that you take. And if you look at the studies of antidepressants compared to placebo, which is a sugar pill, it's nothing. In many cases, the placebo effect was just as good as the actual antidepressant. Okay, so people thinking that they were doing something about the problem, just simply thinking, was actually equivalent to doing something about the problem. Okay, so this is why I'm saying it is important to have stress management tools in place, all right? Because when you stress, it's gonna increase cortisol in the body, which I said before, cortisol causes the body to store fat, but cortisol is a toxic, acidic hormone in the body as well too, okay? It causes inflammation all over the body, all right? It's also, stress has been shown to increase heart disease, skin issues as well too, all right? So acne, psoriasis, things of that nature, all right? Also, stress has been shown to cause liver cirrhosis. Okay, so literally, a mental stress could lead to a physical dis-ease. Okay? Essentially, a, a physical stress in the body that will call high blood pressure because we know when we get stressed, our blood pressure goes up. So we know that when we eat improperly, and when I say eat improperly, consume life improperly, and we don't digest it properly, that stress can turn into dis-ease in the body. So we gotta maintain our stress. That means things like meditation, breathing exercises, etc. These are things that you should be doing on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, I start my day like that and I always end my day like that, okay? With some sort of stress management tool, all right? So hugely important. Number five, number five, stem cell stimulation, okay? For those of you who don't know, all of the cells in our, we have 75 trillion cells in our bodies, right? And some cells are designated, meaning a heart cell is a myocardial cell. So that's a heart cell. It does what a heart is supposed to do. It makes the heart tissue, et cetera. Okay, same thing with a lung cell, same thing with a liver cell, same thing with a gut cell, et cetera. These are designated. They're doing what they do specifically for what they do. But then you have stem cells. Stem cells can become anything. They can become a brain cell. And there was a period of time where we as humans believed that once you lost your brain cells, they can't, couldn't be rejuvenated. Well, guess what? We found out that that was a lie. Brain cells can be rejuvenated through stem cells. Okay, so stem cells are essentially these cells that have no designation. They're like, I'll do whatever you need. Okay, so when the body gets liver cirrhosis and says, okay, I need to go to the liver and make cells there. Okay, so the body's detoxification process gets rid of the old disease cells and then the stem cells come in and make a new liver. All right, this is why in six or seven months, if you properly do things correctly, we can regenerate two thirds of our liver, meaning we can lose two thirds of our liver, only have one third remaining, and we can completely rejuvenate two thirds of our liver. 
one of the most important organs in our bodies. So it's hugely important to know and understand that the body is capable of not only healing itself, but it's also capable of regenerating itself as well too. All right, so stem cell simulation, how can we do that? Do aerobic exercise. So when we do an aerobic exercise, not just resistance training, but aerobic exercise, you know, doing some calisthenics, like doing some, doing some jumping jacks, okay? Which is a full body activity. Doing squats, doing burpees, doing yoga, okay? Doing aerobic class, doing a little bit of running, okay? That aerobic activity, you wanna get that going. Decreasing the amount of sugar you have in your body. Listen, I'm always at you guys about how much sugar we're consuming on a daily basis. Trust me when I say this, sugar is the mo one of the most deadly things you could put in your body, unless it's already in a whole food, like fruit, okay? But sugar on its own is a chemical, it's a toxin, okay? So decreasing the amount of sugar. Vitamin D, vitamin D actually stimulates stem cell production. And 76% of African-Americans are deficient in vitamin D, which means it's gonna be very difficult for us to regenerate tissues when we're leading in categories like kidney disease, when we're leading in categories like liver disease, when we're leading in categories like colon cancer, heart disease, these issues that are deterioration of the tissues, okay? So when you look at vitamin D, it's not only good for the immune system, but it's also good for stem cell stimulation as well too. Decreasing the amount of alcohol you're drinking. I know that we all like to have a good time, but let me tell you something. Don't have a good time at the expense of your health, okay? And the last thing that you could do, or and there are many others, is fasting. Fasting will also help stimulate stem cell production as well too. Which leads me to the next one, okay? The next Healing practice number six is fasting. Intermittent fasting, water fasting, mono fasting, where you're doing just fruit or you're doing just smoothies, okay? These type of fastings are very healing to the body. And most people don't incorporate this. I incorporate intermittent fasting into my daily practice. Now, women, you have to switch things up around your menstrual cycle, but this is something that I do on a daily basis. All right, and why is stem cell, you know, I'm why, not stem cell, but why is fasting so beneficial? Autophagy, autophagy means intracellular cleansing. That means that it is gobbling up those dead, you know, uh, disease cells, getting rid of them. You, if you got kidney disease, you got to get rid of the dead and disease cells before you can actually regenerate, regenerate new cells. Okay, so fasting helps with that. It's also good because it dissolves those disease cells. It also helps with activating our repair and regeneration system in our bodies as well too. And it also gives the body the rest that it needs. You remember I was talking earlier about sleep? When we're in deep sleep, that's when our bodies repair and regenerate. Well, guess what? When we're in a fasted state, it does the same thing. Okay, so we wanna incorporate fasting. Number seven, movement, exercise, all right? and the proper type of exercise, okay? Not just this vigorous exercise, but even me, it's morning right now, I come out here, and in a second, I'm gonna take my shoes off, I'm gonna take my shirt off so my, my, my skin could be fully exposed to the sun, and I'm gonna do some exercises out here. I'm gonna get some grounding on because my feet are gonna be directly connected with the ground. I'm gonna do some push-ups, okay? I'm gonna do some Mike Tyson push-ups. Okay, I'm gonna do some sprints up and down these rows, okay? So doing the proper exercise in the proper environment is very important too and very medicinal to the body because we know that exercise improves circulation in the body and improves our weight, our bone and muscle mass as well too, all right? And then number eight, number eight healing practice that you can incorporate and I mentioned just a second ago is grounding putting your feet directly on the ground. Most of the shoes that we use today are rubber. And what does rubber do to electricity? Because this ground that we're walking on here, this ground is full of electrons, electricity. And when we're connected directly to it, those electrons come from the ground up through the soles of our feet in our bodies and act like antioxidants. Oxidation is like rusting to the body. 
And when we put these electrons into our bodies, they not only electrify the body, but they act as antioxidants as well too, to fight things, okay? Antioxidants are important for our immune system. They're important for fighting off infection. They're important for fighting off cancer, free radicals in our bodies. And when we walk on the ground, when we ground, we connect ourselves back to this earth. And I have an entire video on that. So if you wanna know more about it, go see that. But when we re reconnect ourselves back with mother nature, by walking directly on the ground, not in rubber, shoes like nikes or even in shoes that are expensive like back in the days the shoes used to be wooden wood can still conduct electricity at least but today most of our shoes are rubber plastic which means that they're keeping us from getting that energy okay so grounding is a very healing practice it's good for blood flow it's good for ink improving sleep which we talked about before it decreases inflammation and it reduces stress okay so those are the eight healing practices i wanted to share with you got a little helicopter coming over real quick but those are the eight healing practices i want to share with you and uh, i'm going to give you a bonus because you're still here the bonus is sound frequency healing okay now this is one i need to do an entire video about sound frequency healing you need to understand that our bodies are tapped into sound okay sound affects us this is why i was telling people like most of the most of the music i listen to is on a certain sound frequency because even in egypt if you go back and look at the hieroglyphs you'll see a lot of the pharaohs with these tuning forks okay and a little hammer that tuning fork and hammer is there to create a frequency okay so using frequency as a, a form of healing, all right? When I lived in India, when I lived in India, we would do sound bowl healing. So check out sound bowl healing. But also some frequencies I'll give you that you can tap into, 528 hertz, okay? Um, 639 hertz, 639 hertz music uh, helps cells communicate with each, each other. Why is that important? because when cells start to communicate, they notice that there's a cancerous cell and that cancerous cell doesn't want to communicate because a cancerous cell is rogue. It's like, I'm doing my own thing. And so when cells start to communicate and they notice one cell isn't communicating, they say, okay, so we need to find out who this guy is. Is he friend or foe? Okay, so this is why this, this sound frequency is very healing as well too. Also 432 hertz as well too. All right, so these are just a few of the sound frequencies that you need to tap into on a daily basis. Also, also 963. All right, so look up those, um, look up those as a form of meditation or music. So you can just type in 963 hertz music. All right, so sound frequency is also a form of healing as well too. I have, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. This, in my opinion, is one of the best videos that I've made, ever made in terms of the information that I give you. So please share this video with everybody you love and everybody you care about because sharing is caring. And this is how we not only heal individually, but this is how we heal collectively as well, too. I want to thank you for your support. And if you want to support me a little bit more, hit that subscribe button. Encourage other, other people to do the same. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.